Certain bigger drawing workers have managed to get away with a monumental amount of bad behavior compared to others in the world of professional wrestling. Yet what they have in common with their fellow lower down the card heat magnets is the general hatred and frustration they inspired in locker rooms everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're the champ or just a wannabe chump, being a pain in the ass rarely makes you popular. I'm Gareth from What Culture Wrestling and here are 10 famous wrestlers no one liked working with. Number 10. Ryback There was a split second where Ryback looked like the next big thing. No, not the next Brock Lesnar silly. With booking reminiscent of Goldberg's undefeated streak, the colorful meathead tore through WWE's undercard. Then when John Cena got injured, CM Punk needed a new opponent for Hell in a Cell 2012, and the big guy was given the rub. Considerably more vocal than the hapless jobbers Ryback destroyed, however, Punk was furious over what he perceived to be Ryback's hazardously stiff offense. Booked as a choke artist moving forward, Ryback's stock fell both on screen and behind the scenes, where he rubbed many big names the wrong way. Despite notable in-ring improvements towards the end of his tenure, Ryback couldn't even beat Kalisto for the US title at this time. He's even confirmed in the years since that Vinnie Mac himself very unsubtly loathed him by this point. Fed up, Ryback went on a tear regarding WWE's pay scale on his Tumblr and was swiftly dropped from the promotion. Yeah, that'll probably do it. Number 9. Stan Hansen With punches that felt like bricks to the face and lariats that felt like trucks to the throat, Stan Hansen had an awful habit of throwing his peers' well-being to the wind, according to the man himself. His bone-crunching work stems from his visual impairment. Legally blind without his specs, Hansen didn't want to risk anything he did looking fake, so he'd simply clock them for real. While Hansen was well-behaved when working for Giant Baba, his antics in the US proved a little bit disastrous. Fiercely protective of the monstrous aura he cultivated in Japan, Hansen didn't want to risk photos or tapes of him looking weak making their way back to the land of the rising sun. Frequently refusing to job and no selling offense, the often grumpy Hansen cranked his unprofessionalism up a notch in the AWA. Offered a run as AWA World Heavyweight Champion, Hansen readily agreed, seeing big time dollar signs on the rise. After being disappointed by the subsequent pay, though, Vern Gagne ordering him to hastily drop the belt to Nick Bockwinkle proved to be the tip of the iceberg. Enraged, Hansen hightailed it back to Japan where he defended the belt without the promotion's authorization. Then, after AWA stripped him of the title and gave it to Bockwinkle, Hansen ran the belt over with his car. And you thought Shotzi Blackheart's tank had it rough. Needless to say, Hansen received little work in the US again. Number 8. Melina Athletic and effective as a dastardly heel, Melina was a hit for WWE on screen, but unfortunately a walking disaster backstage. There have been reports of various talents not wanting to work with her due to her attitude problems at this time. The roster's growing hatred of the trouble surrounding her behavior also led to a particularly brutal thrashing from the infamous wrestler's court. WWE de-pushed and ultimately dropped her in 2011. A key reason for the release surrounded WrestleMania 27 and Melina's fury surrounding Trish Stratus's place on the card. Jersey Shaw was a big thing, and WWE cashed in by having Snooki wrestle. Melina's then boyfriend John Morrison and Trish Stratus were the reality star's tag partners. Miffed that Stratus had taken a slot she believed herself more cut out for, Melina did not keep her opinions to herself. In a show of passive aggressive solidarity, Morrison frequently blanked Stratus during the build and subsequent match. The last straw for all involved, Melina was let go in August and Morrison was turned into a jobber to the stars for the rest of the year. So that plan didn't exactly work out, did it? Number 7. Austin Aries Austin Aries had all the tools. Supreme athletic prowess, great technical ability, charisma, popularity, you name it, he had it. Sadly though, the one thing he did lack was the ability to play nice with his colleagues. There's been a smorgasbord of examples regarding Aries' attitude problems going back to his runs in TNA. When announcer Christy Hemi got his and Robert Roode's tag team name wrong, Aries decided the best course of action was to push his crotch against her face in the 
corner. In the understandable doghouse, Aries eventually left and later signed with WWE, where he was greeted with plentiful fanfare. His sterling color commentary work for 205 Live continued to win over crowds, with the budding Neville feud receiving a positive reception too. Disappointingly dumped from the main card of WrestleMania 33 though, the Aries vs Neville feud fizzled out with a double leaving after a third straight loss to the man that gravity forgot. Aries also later confessed to constant disputes with the creative team. Most disappointing of all was Aries' initially awesome return to Impact Wrestling. Bagging the world title, Aries was more over than ever, damn it! Until the prospect of losing said title to Johnny Impact arrived. No selling the finish and flipping everyone the bird, a furious Aries stormed off during Impact's celebration and has tumbled into smaller and smaller indie obscurity ever since. Number 6. The Dynamite Kid Goofy and light-hearted in nature, Owen Hart's pranks regularly kept things fun and interesting while on the road. In contrast, the Dynamite Kid's idea of practical jokes were straight up brutal. From spiking people's drinks with obscene laxative doses to cutting up their ring gear, Kid was an out-and-out -out sadist. The cruelty didn't end with his OTT pranks, though. Kid was a surly brute between the ropes, often eviscerating jobbers with murderously stiff offense. A young Mick Foley even wound up eating through a straw for several weeks after Kid rearranged his jaw with a decapitating lariat. The man synonymous with the diving headbutt was so reviled that when Jacques Rougeau knocked his teeth out in a bar scuffle, the French Canadian was widely celebrated for it. That's what you get for stiffing Mrs. Foley's baby boy. Number 5. Sable. According to various workers from the Attitude Era, Sable's problems stem from a bad case of egocentrism. Believing her late 90s popularity was the key instigator of WWE's Monday Night Wars resurgence, she quickly developed a bad rep for being hard to work with among both wrestlers and management. Fed up, other stars took an interest in cruelly pranking the Playboy centerfold. Worst among them was X-Pac, who took the time to defecate into her bag on her last day in the promotion, which was not the only time X-Pac was believed to have pulled this trick on someone. X-Pac's actions were considered hilarious by his peers, hammering home just how unpopular Sable had become in the locker room and just how vile the backstage environment could truly be at this time. It's pretty graphic. Number 4. Shawn Michaels Widely regarded as one of the greatest of all time, Shawn Michaels cleaned his act up considerably by the time he made a comeback in 2002. During his initial run, however, HBK was regarded as a nightmare to deal with. The Click leader was notorious for his shocking attitude, politicking, and rampant drug abuse. Vince McMahon infamously gave Michaels more leeway than he has to any other star in company history, vacating an absurd amount of titles he won over not wanting to to lose them to other workers, Michaels also threw several stars under the bus. Worst of all was Vader, whose potential world title run was scrapped due to issues between him and Michaels. Jim Cornette has even confirmed that Michaels reduced the big man to tears by threatening to have him fired mid-match. What a dick. By WrestleMania 14, the heartbreak kid had misbehaved so much and so often that Undertaker was on hand to rearrange his face. Should he not cleanly drop the belt to Steve Austin? Now there's an incentive. Number 3. Hulk Hogan Arguably the biggest star in professional wrestling history, it appears Terry Bollea had far more in common with his villainous Hollywood Hogan persona than the noble Hulkamania one. Screwed over several times in the earlier years of his career, the Hulkster appreciated the importance of protecting his image by the time he arrived in WWE. Yet while his constant politicking kept him front and center, it also proved a huge hindrance for other bright talents of tomorrow. Many peers have implied Hogan had a bit of the Harvey dense about him, saying one thing to fellow wrestlers and an entirely different, notably worse thing, to management. With creative control in his WCW contract, Hogan frequently meddled with angles and pushes left, right, and center. Most egregious of all of these are his refusal to put Sting over properly at Starcade 97 and his demand that the Ultimate Warrior be brought in just a job to him. How petty. Age also didn't do much to mellow the fake tan fanatic either, as Shawn Michaels and Randy Orton can attest. Number 2. Goldberg The former defensive tackle found new life as a pro wrestler during the late 90s industry boom. Presented as an 
unbeatable badass, the larger-than-life Goldberg was a smash hit with fans. Sadly, that's not the only smashing he did. Dangerously stiff and cumbersome between the ropes, Goldberg was a terror to wrestle. Not only did he hit too hard, Goldberg's training at the power plant had been alarmingly minimal, and he often struggled with the basics. Worst of all was his kicking of Bret Hart's brain right out of his damn skull. During his program with Big Bill in 03, even The Rock apparently warned some extras being used for a segment with him to be extra careful. The people's champion had quickly learned the hard way how tough taking a spear from Goldberg really was. As if all that wasn't enough though, Goldberg also garnered a poor rep among his WCW peers for an ego bigger than Jupiter. Despite recent jobs to Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre, Goldberg still holds a surprisingly strong death grip on the WWE main event scene when he pops up these days, much to the detriment of the product. Number 1. Bruiser Brody The founding father of hardcore, Bruiser Brody knew his worth and then some, straight up refusing to do business if he felt it wasn't up to scratch. A huge ticket seller, the chain-swinging wild man star power was at its biggest in Japan. Much like Stan Hansen, Brody wanted to protect the indestructible aura he'd built up in all Japan. Therefore, he frequently refused to sell for talent in the US and Puerto Rico. Even world champs such as Ric Flair and Nick Bockwinkel got little out of him. Worse still, Brody had a bad habit of not showing and would sometimes get in the ring only to shut down and refuse to wrestle at all. A star in a time where kayfabe still ruled supreme, Brody's business exposing antics infuriated the whole industry. Brody also had an unfortunate penchant for brutalizing wrestlers he felt were beneath him. Even a very young Undertaker fell victim to Brody's aggressive antics, suffering a pitiless beatdown in WCCW. Brody did what he wanted, when he wanted, and it's not hard to see why very few challenged the frightening force. Look at the guy! And that's our list! Know of any other famous wrestlers no one likes working with? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find more incredible, beautiful articles just like the bad boy this video is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon.